the emperor, the conqueror, the champion, the lion is here. Mm. Girl, season two, young, famous, and African. You already knew I was coming with this video. Came on camera, giving whatever you like. If you know, you know. Let me let y'all know now, there's going to be spoilers. So if you have not seen it yet, go ahead and actually check out my Young, Famous, and African season one review. Watch the season and then come back to this video or you can just enjoy the spoilers. It's up to you, no pressure. I have a ton of notes on my iPad, so if you see me looking down, that's why. But girl, 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 how are y'all feeling about season two of Young, Famous, and African? Did you watch it yet? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Ay! Now, wow. Now, if you remember, on season one, I said we need to see improvement with the wigs. We can no longer give 90s Nollywood wigs. They heard me. I know somebody heard me back there. The wigs updated and I was happy to see that just in one year's time, baby. So in this video, we're just gonna review episodes one, two, and three. So boom, the first episode was titled Awkward Reunions and it was definitely that. Now, this whole show gives me, y'all only link up when it's time to film. You're all in your respective countries. You're in Nigeria, you're in Ghana, Namibia, <laughs> you're in Johannesburg, you're in Cape Town. Like you're all doing your own separate things until it's time to film and so if you leave off how they left off last season never really reconnected maybe once or twice and then a year later they're thrusted back into this community or this cast um yeah it's bound to be awkward you know there's some enemies there's some frenemies there's some new beefs going on now y'all let me know i really felt like this season was a lot more scripted than last season and i'm here for the script like it's you know I feel like some of the producers threw in some extra castmates to kind of stir up some drama. We do have some new characters, Bonang, the Luish. He is from Namibia. He's a young entrepreneur who's looking for a surrogate, honey. Yes, you, yes, <laughs> I said what I said. Okay, we have a man, an African man out here looking to impregnate a surrogate. This is really, literally, and truly a new day and age. But shout out to all the surrogates in Africa though. Fontana, we got Fontana who is is a dance hall artist from Ghana. I actually checked out some of her music because I'm not gonna lie, I never heard of an African dance hall artist. So I checked out some of her music and I was like, is this cultural appropriation? I don't know. Somebody who's a... <laughs> Listen, I don't know. So the show opens up and we have Diamond and Quentin, AKA DJ Naked, having a conversation. Diamond wants to throw a party and he wants DJ Naked to help him throw the party. So Quentin is inviting everyone and saying, you know, Diamond's throwing this party. He's throwing this reunion party. Everyone is invited, but Diamond did not necessarily invite Andile. Now y'all got on me. Last season, the Africans in the comment got on me and said that I was butchering his name. That's my apology. I hate when people mispronounce my name. Andile, okay? We gonna, yeah, we getting into our roots on this. Andile, all right? We, we gonna do our best on this. Diamond invited everybody with the exception of Andile. Now, Quentin is telling Andile, like, yeah, Diamond is having his party. And he's like, are you sure I'm invited? Because, you, you know. Now, if y'all remember, last season ended off with Andile trying to get with Diamond's baby mama, Zari, all right? Now, Zari and Diamond have this weird co-parenting situation over here. And Andile is supposed to be Diamond's boy. So it's like, yo, what, like, what you doing at my baby mom's crib? Like, I just got off the flight to see my kids and my baby mom. <laughs> Some ghetto shit. And come check them and you pulling up to see my my baby mom's like that's the ultimate disrespect so andy let knew he wasn't invited but the quentin kind of made it seem like no you good you invited diamond invited you and diamond's like <laughs> I never invited that guy. Now, Swanky and Zari link up at this boutique. Everyone is linking up and clicking up, you know, trying to catch up. What's been going on? Ain't seen you for a year, because uh, we really ain't friends like that. But I will say Zari and Swanky do have somewhat of a friendship. Swanky invited Zari to Nigeria, where they had this, you know, this, this huge party. And, and she said, I noticed I didn't see Annie at the party. Like, I was expecting to see 
Annie at the party because Swanky and Annie, I mean, they glued to the hip. Like, they right hand, left hand. They, they peanut butter jelly. Like, they pounded yam and a goosey soup. Like, they go together. You're not eating one without the other. You feel me? So she's kind of like, oh, that was weird that, you know, Annie wasn't there. So he says, listen, I haven't seen Annie in a minute. I haven't spoken to her in a minute. We not on good terms. She disrespected me to the highest level. Now, let me explain something to you Africans. <laughs> let me just speak specifically Nigerians. You know, tend to feel disrespected to the highest level in any uncomfortable situation I'm speaking from experience. So at this point, I'm like, mm, the highest level, like, do it really be the highest level? Because I've seen higher, you know, but... It you know, it's a lot of respectability. So it's like, if you don't give me the utmost respect, it's the utmost disrespect type of thing. So I was just like, mm, is this fake? I'm gonna be honest with you. It took me a minute to really believe that Annie and Swanky were not on good terms, not on speaking terms. I'm like, is this fake? Is this a storyline? Was this rehearsed? It just did not make sense. And you know, them trying to keep it a secret for so long. So Zari also says that she hasn't seen Andile since cut. <laughs> That wraps it up. Thank you guys for a great season one. You're free to go back to your countries and live your normal lives again. Like, what do you mean you have not seen Andile since season one? Approximately one year ago. Like, what do you mean you just started talking to this man? Y'all building a relationship, a bond. Y'all flirting. Y'all feeling each other. Y'all want to take things to the next level. But after the director says cut, season done, y'all don't see each other no more. Like, that's just weird to me. Why not? Like, why not link up again? So Connie just flew in from Dubai, honey. Her and her man, I'm about her man from season one. He's not in this season. And I was like, what? Why your man not here? Like, I'm confused he was in season one. He didn't say much, but he was in season one. Why, like, no update, no, like, she was just like, nah, you're not in this one. Maybe they weren't paying him. I don't know. But she flew in from Dubai and Quentin was like, um, where's your man? She's like, oh, he's in Dubai. I left him in Dubai. I was just like, that was really never your man. Did you hire him to be your man for the show, girl? Nothing surprises me anymore. So Kanye links with Annie and it's like, girl, 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 girl. Like my home girl, my best friend on this show, my favorite cast member, my sis. Like that was real excitement. I was like, damn, they really don't be linking up. <laughs> like, you know, when you see one of your favorite coworkers and then maybe they went on vacation or you went on vacation and then you get back to work and it's like, that's my baby. It was like that. Like, you my favorite co-worker. So they give each other genuine hugs and everything. And they get to talking. Of course, Annie starts talking about Tubaba. I mean, like, three seconds into the conversation, she's talking about her marriage and Tubaba. And, you know, the toll that it's taking on her. How season one, everyone, the blogs, the comments, the trolls, the me. Like, everyone was talking about the relationship. Um, her, her relationship with Tubaba and she talked about, you know, and how it just took a really big toll on her and her family. Okay, so then she asked about Swanky and Annie's like, listen, me and Swanky don't talk. We haven't talked. We haven't seen each other. We're not friends anymore. Don't ask me about Swanky. But the interesting thing was, well, Annie basically says she doesn't know why Swanky cut her off. She doesn't know why she's not talking to Swanky, but she thinks it could be because she was having a lot of scandal. Her names were in the blogs. You know, her husband's names were in the blogs and alleged baby popped up. So she thought that maybe it was because she was being dragged for filth, you know, by social critics that maybe Swanky decided to distance himself from her because he he didn't want to also mess up his brand. This is her thoughts in her mind because they never sat down and had a conversation. It never necessarily had a fallout. It was one of those things where it's just like, we just stopped talking. We just stopped talking. Let me know if you ever had a, a situation with your friends. So we don't get a clear understanding as to, you know, Swanky hasn't said what happened. Annie says what she thinks happened, but we don't know what actually happened. And at this point, I'm like, nothing happened. Y'all need a storyline. 
So Andile and Nadia link up. Andile is like, listen, I'm coming to this party, but I don't really think I was really invited like that. Nadia is excited about her new man. I said, Nadia, if it's one thing you stay with, it's a new man. Y'all remember last season, she had her American boyfriend overseas and they was traveling and stuff like that. Now she got a new nigga, okay? And she's excited about him. So Andile is asking questions about this relationship and he drops the bomb that, yeah, like, wasn't his wasn't he in a really public relationship with Bonang and she's like yeah why and he's like isn't Bonang your friend and she like no why one thing about Nadia Nadia wants all the tea Nadia wants all the information about everybody else situation but Nadia will give you droplets about what she needs to know about what you need to not know about her relationship Pay attention. You don't know shit about Nadia. <laughs> but Nadia know, Nadia will dig and dig and dig and ask questions and inquire. And so Diamond touches down him and Naked link up. They're in this beautiful home, this beautiful Airbnb. And Naked is like, listen, I know you like to hunt. And I'm like, yo, these African niggas. I know. I married one. Us, us African men, we like to hunt. Diamond, I know you like to hunt. You you ever been hunting in Ghana? So he lets him know he invited this Ghanaian artist named Fantana. But Diamond really couldn't get over the fact that Andile was trying to break up his family. And he said he expected someone like Andile to help him bring his family together, not to step in and split shit further apart. I do get that from a male's perspective. It's like your homeboy, you know, there's a line, there's a boundary, there's a bro code. You're not supposed to step on toes. You know what I'm saying? He said out of all of the beautiful women in South Africa, out of all of the beautiful women, you chose my baby mama who I still got feelings for and I'm still probably piping on the side. Pipe it up, pipe it up. Like he still, like, come on. Like you, like mine. So everyone starts pulling up to this reunion party. Everyone looks grand and great. I was here for all the extravagant looks. I love the look. Looks. I love the extra fashions, honey. Swanky always slays. He took it up a notch this season. And, and so did Annie. I was like, Annie, I guess Swanky is not styling her anymore, but the looks was looking. Them confessional looks was hitting. Same for Zari, but we'll get into that. Everyone's pulling up to the palace. Diamond is there. Um, the girls are pulling up slowly but surely, smoking the shisha. Pass me the shisha. And Kaylee, y'all remember Kaylee? Kaylee is like, okay, so is Andy Lake coming? Like she starts asking questions and Diamond is like, I should get my glasses so I could be Diamond. Hold on. Let's, let's toast, man. Let's toast. Let's toast. Let's toast. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's toast. Zari and Nadia are no longer beefing because... Nadia got a new man, okay? Zari really only got smoke for the girls that are that have entanglements with Diamond and with Annie. Like, she really didn't have smoke with nobody else. So it was basically Nadia and Annie versus Zari. So Zari is like, we good. Like, how you doing? How's your new man? I heard you got a new man. I heard you got a new man. Okay, cool. So you don't want my baby daddy? Okay, cool. So we, we good. We... Cause we are sisters, <laughs> we stand together. Like we cheetah girls, baby, what's up? So everyone's there now, everyone's hugging and kissing and chatting. Swanky comes in, of course, last. Swanky always gotta make his grand entrance. He comes in last, he comes in vivacious, he comes in slaying. But do y'all ever notice that Swanky does not walk normally? <laughs> You don't notice he only walks runway. Like I have my normal walk. I have my, my husband here walk <laughs> and I have my runway walk and it, and I switch it up depending on where I'm at. But Swanky only walks runway period. So Swanky walks in. Want to be on top. Uh, 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 uh. Like that bop, he got that runway 90s bop. He's kissing the girls, he's hugging the girls. He's like, oh my God, long time don't see, no time no see, how far, how far, how far, how far, how far? And does not greet Annie. 
Now, I'm sure y'all noticed by now, I think this is cult, This is worldwide, culturally, when you don't greet someone, when you don't acknowledge someone, it is very shady and very disrespectful, especially among specifically Nigerians. Like, Nigerians have the saying, greet well. Like, you have to greet well. Like, it's a big disrespect if you don't greet well. I mean, even if you say hi, it's not a proper greeting in Nigerian culture to just see someone and say hi. That's not a, a, a proper greeting. Like, you have to acknowledge the person. You you know, engage the person, hug the person, talk to the person, you know what I'm saying? Look, eye contact. <laughs> In certain tribes, you digue, you know, you dip, you curtsy, you, it's, 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 it's a whole thing. Okay, so when you just completely ignore her, you you slapped her utmost remember utmost disrespect and this was in front of everybody so everybody's like huh usually y'all are peanut butter and jelly y'all foo foo and goosey soup but now y'all oil and water how did this happen everyone is confused everyone is like what happened why didn't swanky greet annie and y'all already know annie was in that confessional like that's his, that's his disrespect <laughs> she was fuming and swanky was just like yup and girl it was a mess <laughs> so people are moving around the pieces of the pieces on this chessboard are just moving around there's literally one group avoiding another group and quentin was like is it just me or like when this group comes this group leaves and when this group leaves and this group comes like what is going on <laughs> and no one knows really what's going on so swanky starts making his speech he's like oh i have someone i want to introduce you to she is the queen she is the media mama like she is mother no one is better than her <laughs> like he was literally taking a knife to Annie's chest, metaphorically speaking, and just twisting it and twisting it. You guys know that Annie, or maybe you don't know, but Annie is an actress or a former actress. I'm not, I don't know if she still works, if, if she's still an actress, but she's an actress. So if you say that someone is the queen of media and movie, it's just like, you're literally slapping her in the face because that's literally <laughs> what she does. So before he could even finish his whole introduction, Nadia Connie, Connie, Nadia Connie and Annie leave and he welcomes Bonang. So Bonang, Bonang comes through, like he says, she's a media personality. She's well known in South Africa and she pulls up and the welcome was kind of dry, but it was not, y'all never gonna get the hi that you expect because this group is messy. <laughs> this group is messy. They're not that welcoming. They don't even like the people that they're sitting next to. And now you're introducing another person into the mix. So those ladies already left by the time Bonang came in. So now they come back and it's just like, oh crap, what the heck is Bonang doing here? So Connie says, I know Bonang, we're not friends, but we work in the industry and Connie says, I don't really, I can't really get her. Like I can't gauge her. So I stay away from her, AKA I don't know her business. So, I, <laughs> so we can't really be friends like that. Connie is somebody who needs to know your business in order to consider you a friend. And that's crazy because people really be going through stuff and you can't even go through your own stuff because if you don't tell Connie, she autom Connie, she automatically assumes, oh, it's beef. It's beef. Like you, you ain't call me to tell me why you feeling some type of way. We gonna get into that later. So everyone is like, this party is weird. This party is awkward. It was not fun. It was just weird. Everyone's being fake. And then Naked comes in holding hands with Fontana, the Ghanaian dance hall artist. And Kaylee is like, okay. Damn, you should have told me that you were bringing a woman to the group. You would not like if I brought a man to the group and didn't let you know first. But that died right there. Kaylee ain't about those people like that. She's not about to make that a storyline or a problem. Diamond sees Fontana. Hey. Big nyash. Ikebe supa. Booty of all booties, baby. And I said, hold on. We need to have a BBL, an Africa BBL conversation, <laughs> okay? BBLs have hit the continent, y'all. The BBLs have hit the continent, y'all. But it's crazy because don't get me wrong. I went to South Africa for my birthday. Let me really be honest. The BBL is the blueprint out there. I, honestly, from what I saw, nine out of 10 women was a BBL blueprint, meaning they did not have a BBL 
But if I wasn't in South Africa, I would think, damn, everybody here got BBLs, but that's actually how they're naturally shaped. Now, Ghanaian women tend to be the same way. And if you know F Fontana, I looked up Fontana, I looked into her old pictures and stuff like that. She actually naturally had the BBL blueprint, that, that body that's just like, is that real or is it not? But it was, but she did get some work done. She did get some fat taken out and fat put in, you know, she did admit that. So there is this conversation that, you know, African women, you know, don't get bought, don't get their bodies done. But I think it is becoming more popularized on the continent. The percentage is growing. <laughs> the percentage is growing. But it's a lot of natural blueprints out there. I, I, let me just say that. Let me just speak from what I saw, okay? Diamond was just like, whoa, it gave me super. Diamond fell in love, not with the beauty, with the booty. Diamond wants to smash anything that moves, especially anything with a fat ass. So I don't know what's going on, but at this point, half of the group is trying to leave. Everybody is saying their goodbyes. <laughs> and you just like, think about it. You have two new women that was just introduced to the group and everybody's like, okay, nice to meet you. I'm out. I'll I'll see y'all later. Like, I'm out. I'm off this. This is awkward. This is weird. Andile, who was also feeling the weird vibes, he's like, all right, I'm out, you know? And, and sidebar, he was talking and hugging and flirting with Zari. So Diamond was just looking like, wow, you really doing this? Like, we really, really, really doing this? Like, this wasn't just a storyline. Like, we really, really doing this with my baby moms. So he's about to leave. He's hugging Zari. He's hugging everybody. And Diamond is just like, yo, Andile. I think Diamond was a little tipsy. He's like, yo, Andile, you my role model, man. You my role model. Model. I want to be like you. You my role model. <laughs> Andila looked, <laughs> and looked at him like, yep. So he's like, I like your suit. I like your suit. That's a nice suit. Andila is like, yep. The funniest thing, as Andile was walking towards the door, y'all, he took that suit jacket off. I fell out my seat. No, you're not taking that suit jacket off. That suit was fly. Did y'all see that? Andile is one of the best dressed men outside of Swanky, but Swanky adds his feminine taste, his feminine twist to it. But on the masculine note, Andila is actually the best dressed man hands down he gets it right every time he he always looks put together so after they leave you know the new girls they want to know what's the tea so fontana starts asking questions she's like hold on is that your man hold on that's your man hold on that's your baby daddy but that's your boyfriend but that's your husband but that's your cousin but that's your ex 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 who's dating your ex huh so she asks Zari if Andile was her boyfriend. Zari says no. Diamond says yes. And Zari's like, that's not my man. Like, we never hooked up. We just vibed. Like, we just vibed. We just talked. Nothing serious ever happened. We were just talking. So Swanky says he thinks that Annie left because she was uncomfortable. And I was like, well, yeah, that was the whole purpose of you doing the most. Like, you didn't greet her. You introduced other women to the group and act like, you know, they were the new best thing. You know, they were your new bestie. They were the new Annie. Remember, that's how he introduced Annie in season one. Like, this is Annie. This is the queen of Annie. Africa, the same way he introduced Bonang was the way he introduced Annie in season one. So obviously Annie was uncomfortable. You guys have not spoken. Y'all not on good terms, allegedly. We don't know yet. <laughs> Y'all not on good terms and you didn't greet her. You were sitting on her phone at one point. She was saying, excuse me, you know, excuse me, Swanky. I was sitting there. Excuse me, Swanky. You're sitting on my, my bag on my phone. And he was just like, Like nothing happened. Like she was not talking to him. That would have been a big problem. Like that would that would have yeah that would have got somebody punched in their head because you sitting on my bag. But one thing I did like was that Swanky was very adamant when people kept asking him like what happened, what happened, what happened. He was very adamant about keeping his feud with Annie private. He did not want to air out Annie, even though they were feuding at the time. He's like, listen. This used to be a very good friend of mine. I don't want to just throw her under the bus. I don't want to just expose her. She's been through enough. You know, I still have love for her. So I'm not going to just tell y'all what happened. I'm not just going to spill that tea. Like we're going to have to cross that bridge when we get to it because he actually still cares about Annie. He still loves Annie. Swanky is a good friend. Swanky knows everything everything about the Adibias. He knows everything about Tubaba, everything about Annie, everything about them kids. Like you gotta think about it like, that's Annie's confidant. He is her diary. And he said, listen, we don't fuck with each other right now, but I will never open that diary and tell the world what's in it. You a good person to beef with.
Episode two, Tanya is upset. She says everyone was fake at the party and she wants to throw another party to air out all the fakeness. That's not conducive. <laughs> she wants to throw a mask party since everyone was wearing masks. And the girls was just like, that ain't gonna work. People need to, y'all need to talk to each other one-on-one, -on -one, not in a whole setting. Like what's going on? Why didn't Swanky greet you? And she was like, ah, ah. Ask him, like, ask him why he didn't greet me. Why y'all asking me? I don't know why he didn't greet me. Did you ask him why he didn't greet me? Annie is also not trying to say much. Annie also doesn't necessarily know what exactly happened. Swanky does tell us that Annie does not know why he cut her off. Okay, so Annie don't really know, for real, for real. She can only assume. So anytime someone asks Annie, why you and, why you and Swanky don't talk anymore, her response can only be, ask him I don't know. And they think that she's holding back, but she really doesn't know. <laughs> so Diamond invites Fontana to the studio, talking about, I really like your music though. Like your body, wow. Your body, I mean your music, um, wow, wow. Good, good body, good, good music, wow. Nyash will finish you quick, 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 quick. The flirting is strong. Fontana's like, listen, Diamond is a flirt. I'm a flirt too. Diamond's a hoe. I'm a hoe too. Like, it's a match made in heaven, baby. <laughs> Fontana is young. I think she's like 25. She's the young and young famous and African, right? She's like, I just want to flirt. I just want to have a good time. Diamond, I like his swag. I like his vibe. I like that he's a bad boy. And he's like, I wanna invite you on a date to my crib. And I'm just like, ah, hold on. <laughs> a date to your crib? That's not a date, babe. That's a booty call. That's a Netflix and chill. That's not a date when you when you just met the person. It's that's not a date. Let's stop. Let's stop. <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> so so then he says flat out, y'all, that he wants to manipulate Fontana. And I'm like, Diamond, my guy. I know English is not your first, second, or third language, but you wanna what? <laughs> He says he wants to manipulate her first. So basically he said he wanna bring her to his house so he can manipulate her first so that she can feel like she has a real man. That's crazy. He wants to manipulate her with sex. And he straight up said it, all right? So can't nobody say he lied. He said it. So Swanky tells Nadia that he is so upset with Nadia. He's so upset with Kanye. He felt it was so disrespectful that when he was trying to introduce Annie's replacement, everyone left. So he took it as they were leaving so that they wouldn't meet Bonang, but they were actually leaving because it was just a lot of bad vibes and they needed to have girl talk for a second. So Nadia was like, listen, we weren't trying to be rude. We don't have no problem with Bonang. Um, it's more of, yeah, we needed to have girl talk, but Swanky took it personal. I'm trying to get Annie in her feelings and y'all are watering down. <laughs> y'all are watering it down. Like I wanna, I wanna make an impact and y'all basically ruined the moment. So right now it's Annie versus Swanky. It's Andile versus Diamond. It's Zari and Annie who still haven't gotten on speaking terms since season one. And later down the line, it's Fontana versus Zari. So Kanye is trying to get a hold of Annie. Annie went ghost. Annie flew back to Nigeria. Annie is not answering her phone calls, her emails, her Instagram DMs. Annie is out. Kanye reads the blogs and she sees this new alleged story that Annie's husband, Tu Baba, okay, has a baby on the way with one of his mistresses, this banker, this unknown banker. Kanye thinks that this is the reason why Annie completely just abandoned ship, abandoned show, flew to Nigeria to go be with her allegedly cheating husband child. So this alleged six baby T is making its way through the group. Swanky finds out and Swanky becomes really emotional and he leaves Annie a voice note. And he's basically saying, listen, you know, I hope that what I'm hearing is not true. Call me, I need to hear from you. I need to talk to you. Something like this can push anyone over the edge, right? I did feel like that was a genuine call. 
Um, but Annie did not take it that way. Annie did not take it like it was a genuine call. Annie was like, why are you reading the blogs? I mean, because we're all online and shit pops up and trends. Everybody saw it. Kanye introduces Luis. It was spelled Louis, but they pronounced it Luis. So I'm gonna pronounce it Luis. <laughs> Kanye introduces Luis to Nadia and he's like, hey, I, you know, I... I know you. And Nadia's like, okay, cool, from what? But the, the this is the weird thing about Luis, you know, he has a story with all, not all, he has a story with a few of the women in the group that doesn't really work in his favor. So he kind of comes into the group, yes, he's handsome, yes, he's single, but he's not really getting a good footing in this group with the ladies. Telling Nadia, he's like, oh yeah, you know, I was supposed to be the stylist for one of your music videos. And she's like, and he's like, yeah, but I ended up being one of the models in the music video. And she's like, he's like, there was a snake. There was a snake in the video. You were afraid of the snake. She's like, snake. I do remember snake. And she's like, oh, okay. You were there. You were one of the extras. You just tell where his feelings have been shot down. He wears his heart on his sleeve. I had to Google like, is he a Pisces? Cause it's, it's giving that C cancer, um, water. And she's telling Kanye, she's like, yeah, there was a lot of models there. He was, you know, he was one of the models and she's like, he's like extra. Did she really disrespect me? The ultimate disrespect. <laughs> I don't think she meant it in like a bad way. So Kanye invites Luis to the party, the mask party that she's throwing. And she's like, since you have an MCC, you can give the toast. They're like, listen, it might get messy. It might get real, but this is just how we are. And he's like, yeah, you know, I know Diamond. I have some issues with Diamond and something about his ex. It really wasn't that important. I really feel like when they were casting, when they were casting new members of season two, Louis, you know, he just, he wrote down all of his connections to the people in the group. And I think they picked him because he has so many, like kind of insignificant connections to the people in the group. But when you write it down on paper and you embellish it, honey, and the producers, they see that and they're like, oh really, let's throw that in to kind of throw another storyline for Diamond. But it really didn't go anywhere. And I really think it was the same thing for um, Bonang. Like they thought, her and Nadia having the same ex, being ex, I mean, having, you know, dating the same guy, um, being ex friends, they thought that would be a really eventful storyline. And it just, it wasn't, it fell flat. Like it, it wasn't important, it didn't matter. So Diamond is finally ready to meet with Andile about Zari, but you can tell he was really, really, really upset with Andile about this. And he expressed like, yo, like I expected you to come in here and, you know, help me fix things, not take my woman, even though she ain't my woman but she got my kids and we sometimes smash so she is my woman and we control each other when we have other relationships but you know we outside but we inside but we got kids together so you know it's a mess like just let it go if i hear one more time that's my baby daddy that's my baby mama well then y'all need to be together then that's imp so important to you why aren't y'all in a committed relationship because Diamond can't keep it home. Let's just be real. If he could, he would still be married to Zari. Not outside. And then everybody nyash, okay? So Andile was like, listen, bro, like if this is really how you feel, even though you told me you were not ready to be committed to Zari, you were not ready to have to be home with Zari, you want to be outside, even though you told me that, being that we boys and that really hurts you, I'm a fallback. I'm done with Zari. I got I got no more love, no more affection. I got nothing but hellos and goodbyes for Zari. We'll see about that. So Swanky is actually good friends with Fontana as well. So they link up. Um, she gives him flowers and she's spilling the tea. She's like, listen, me and Diamond were in the studio. And whenever someone hears a Diamond woman, no. So he's warning her. He's like, yo, leave Diamond alone. That boy ain't want to play with. And she's like, listen, I'm his match. Like Diamond met his match. So Andile naked and Diamond are at the gym and they're kicking the shits, having guy talk. Diamond is like, listen, I like my women tiny up top and gigantic at the bottom. And of course he brings up Fontana. Him and um, Quentin are just talking about smashing this and smashing that. And Andile is like, is that all you guys think about when it comes to women is just smashing women? Like, 
that's it that's all you don't want to like get to know a woman first her beauty you don't really want to see her for who she is it's just about smashing women and diamond is like nigga let's not act like we ain't do season one together we was all three kicking the shit saying the same thing like we the same don't act like you different now don't act like you better now don't act like you respect women now because last season yeah we remember those conversations we remember how you pulled up with your two baby mamas to an event stop playing andile so andile is at this point in his grown man's life where he wants a family to come home to he wants consistency he wants his woman his wife his kids he wants a loving family to come home to but he has two baby mamas in which he's still in love with both of them and surprisingly has good relationships with both of them and they both look alike like all right here like all right here one is a little bit taller and chocolate one is a little shorter and lighter but they got the same face they're both stunning like i said wow they're stunning they look like models i'm like wow he really went after the same woman twice that's crazy and andila has always also been a good friend to annie andila is like listen we need to have her back now more than ever she needs us more now than ever before because something like this is going to crush her like if this is true this is going to crush her it's more than just tea Annie is our family. And they do use that word family a lot. But I think when Andila says Annie is his family, I think he means it. So Annie is back in South Africa. She's on FaceTime with her man. Okay, they made sure to get that shot, all right? And they over here kiki -ing. They made sure to get him on FaceTime and they're laughing and kiki -ing. Like, yeah, y'all see the vlogs. Y'all see the trolls talking about another baby on the way. What baby? Like, girl, bye. This lady been pregnant every year. Yeah. like where is the, when is the banker having a baby it's been 10 years child i said if this ain't staged annie is like you know give my marriage a break like my marriage is always the talking point give my marriage a break so kanye throws her mask party and she does not invite bonang you don't really like Bonang at all. Why is that? But it does seem to be one-sided. Like when you hear from Bonang, she doesn't have an issue with Connie. It's more of Connie having an issue with Bonang. It's one you know, one-sided beef. It's like that. Everyone's coming into the party. Annie comes in and Connie is like, do y'all notice Kanye be giving that deaf stare? Like sometimes somebody, somebody could be talking and Kanye is just sitting there like, Like imagine you're talking and the person looking across from you is like this. It's like, you wanna fight? I'm confused why you why you why you staring at me like that. What's the issue? So she's looking at Annie, she's like, girl, hold up, no hugs, no kisses. You left my country and didn't tell me. You left South Africa and did not tell me I'm supposed to be your best co-worker on this show. You left my country and you didn't tell me. And Annie is like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry now. I'm sorry now. I, 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 I'm sorry now. I beg, please forgive me. I'm sorry. Child, y'all know Annie. <laughs> y'all know Annie, okay? So she's like, Connie is like, no. Like, you could have called me. You could have texted me. So Andile sees Zari and he's like, Hello, ma'am. She's like, ma'am? He's like, yes, hello, ma'am. She's like, okay, hello, sir. So Quentin is like, oh, I like this. Like, I like that you guys are being cordial and being distant. And she's like, fuck that, give my hug, boo. <laughs> and she hugs Andile. And Quentin is like, and then Diamond is coming in and Swanky and Quentin, they're like, all right, all right, y'all over here talking for too long. You go over there, you go over there. And Zari is like, excuse me? So I can't even talk to him? Like, okay, we're not, you know, talking, talking, but 
we can't just talk, like be cordial. They're like, no, it looks bad. You need to get away from her. And she's just like, no. He got his own girlfriend. He got a new prospect over here. He in the studio with, like, what are you talking about? Why do I need to just remove myself from Andile? No. So episode three, Kanye is supposed to introduce Luis. He's probably still in the back right now, practicing his toast. And she never gives the cue for him to come in. He just comes in. Personally, I think she was taking too long. Y'all know Kanye likes to talk. He walks in. And while she's introducing him and saying, you know, he's going to give the toast, she turns to Swanky, says, you turns to Annie and says F you turns to Andile says F you and turns to Diamond and says F you. <laughs> oh it was it was giving C Lo Green fuck you they were all taken aback Andile said me a whole me <laughs> I got four kids I'm 40 some and you gonna tell me fuck me I'm a grown ass man that pay all my bills. Who you talking to? Next to respectability, put Annie picture. Annie don't like it. Africans don't like it. Y'all know Kanye is real extra and out of pocket. So I'm glad Andile actually stepped up and was like, Swanky, are you okay with her talking, talking, talking to you like this in front of everyone? You know, Diamond, are you okay with her talking to you like this in front of everyone? Like, no, that's not okay. Don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to nobody like that. Don't talk to Annie like that. Don't talk to me like that. And you know, Kanye, Kanye was just like, listen, like I said what I said, you know, you guys need to get the picture. And Luis is just standing there like, I'm supposed to be giving a toast. I practiced all night for this and y'all cursing each other out. Andile, you still in my shine. He literally said that. I feel like Andile stole my shine. I was just like, no, he did not. <laughs> now he getting cursed out and you talking about some, he's stealing your shine. Babes. You got, you got more episodes left. You can shine later on. Like, what are you talking about? Swanky finally tells the group what's been bothering him. So he finally lets the cat out the bag when everyone leaves. So he's like, listen, Annie doesn't always pick up the phone like that. Y'all know that. So I called her manager to pitch this idea of having this big networking party, bring you guys from South Africa to Nigeria. Let's throw this huge red carpet event. I called her management to see if he would be down with it. Management tried to call her, pitch the idea, try to get all three of them on the phone. She doesn't know he's on the phone. And she says, listen, I, I know you love Swanky, but I wanna do this event with just me. Meaning my name on the invite, my name on the flyer, my name, this is Annie's party, this is Annie's event. Annie is inviting you, Annie is hosting. Annie, 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 Annie,
let me rewind a little bit. So before Fontana ate Diamond, okay, his words, you know, they're talking. So Fontana has this perception of Diamond and Zari's situationship. She thinks that Zari is controlling Diamond. Like she's new here. She don't know. Forgive her. She thinks Zari is controlling Diamond, but she don't see on the back end how Diamond is actually moving pieces around to control Zari. I don't think Zari is holding Diamond back from any type of relationship. She knows, yep, Diamond got a girl, Diamond got a wife, Diamond got a new baby on the way. Like she's, she's okay with his shenanigans, him doing him. She's okay with that. I think she just wants the women to be intimidated by her. She wants the women to be beneath her. She knows he's so unserious and he's going to continue to be unserious with these women. Like she knows he cannot, it's not even that he, he cannot be faithful. It's impossible. So anyways, Fontana is trying to get the tea on Zari and Diamond. And she's just like, this really, this is really weird. Like we get it. You guys procreated, like y'all got kids. We get it. Okay. Y'all not together. Let's move on. Every time I see y'all, it's like y'all are married. Y'all not married. So you need to stop making Zari feel like y'all are married. And it's really, it's really both of them. Like they both play a part but she thinks it's Zari. Diamond tells Fontana that even though him and Zari are not together, Zari wants to have more kids and she wants to have more kids via surrogate. Fontana is like, what? Y'all are even more weird than I thought. So y'all are separated. Y'all already got two kids. Y'all kids about 10 years old and seeing other people and dating and you're traveling and sleeping around with everybody and Y'all want more kids via surrogate, but y'all not together, but y'all dating other people and you got a girlfriend and she got a new man and just bizarre. Fontana is like, nah, you gotta break free from that Zari spell. Like ain't no way she want a surrogate for y'all to have some kids. So some of the guys link up, actually all of the guys link up to play basketball. And I'm like, hold on, you. it's rare to see African men playing basketball. Not to stereotype, but to stereotype a little bit. Most African men enjoy soccer over basketball. You know, they're dribbling and I'm paying attention because I'm like, I need to see some baskets. I need to see who can hoop. And Andile actually can hoop. I was surprised. He was the shortest one, but he know how to ball. So that was cool. Luis is talking. He's like, he got a crush on Fontana. He got a crush on this one. He got a crush on that one. He don't know who to go after. And everyone is pretty much in agreement that you're not Fontana's type. Fontana, you're Luis, you are too nice, you are too soft, you are too sweet, you are too kind, you too innocent, okay? The girls want a bad boy. So while the guys are playing basketball, um, Fontana invites the women to go painting. So they come in and it's this nude model with a basket of fruit in between his legs and the women are just shook. They're like, okay, this is something new. I feel like that was a fun activity. It was something new, something different. They've never done that before. You saw Annie come in, she was like, <sighs> Um, but I thought it was nice. It was like a chill vibe. And Fontana asked the women to say something nice about one another. And no one has anything to say. Nadia is like, I do not got time for that. Everyone's looking around like, who's going to say something nice first? Not me, not me, not me. This is not that group. This is not a woman's empowerment group. So Fontana is like, you guys don't like each other. It's so weird. And Zari is like, Fontana, chill. Like, it's not that we don't like each other. It's just that we're not fake. Like if we're not feeling each other right now, no, I'm not about to compliment you. And so y'all know Tubaba flew in. So he meets with the guys. It's his first time meeting Luish. Luish is like, oh my God, Tubaba. He finally opens up to the group and he says that he wants a child like two years ago. He's ready to have a baby but he's okay if the mother is not involved. Matter of fact, he wants a surrogate baby. Like he does not want a mother figure for this child. Someone can donate their eggs, put the eggs into a surrogate. The surrogate gives him his Lion King. Like, and so all of the men are like, what? Like this is just so unheard of, especially for African men, especially from a Namibian man. This is like literally unheard of. Like, sir, what? Andile tells him that that's selfish and that because Andile grew up, grew up in a one parent household, 
his biggest wish was to grow up with his two parents, which is funny for me because Andile, I mean, your kids are also not growing up in a two parent household. I guess that's also why he's trying to figure out which baby mama he wants to go back to and create a solid family with, but there's still going to be one child because there's two homes. There's still going to be one child who's not growing up with their mother and their father. So it was kind of hypocritical for him to judge. But Luis is proud that he wants to be a single father, okay? And he says there are women in his DMs as we speak putting their bit in. They're like, I'll do it. How much you charging? I'll do it. I'll do it. This remind me of Debrat and, and Judy. And you know what? That's a separate video that we got to do. So Bonang, Swanky, and Fontana link up. Bonang is like, oh, okay, don't worry about it. I'm not going to say anything. That's your business. I'm not going to say nothing. Girl, two seconds in, Swanky's like, what y'all been up to? Fontana been kissing Diamond. Fontana been clapping her cheeks on top of Diamond like, girl, didn't you just say you wasn't finna say nothing? I didn't like that. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, it's not too, I don't really have no feelings about Bonang. She was there for a little split second. But that right there, I was like, nah, I don't like that. I really like that Fontana has us, like she's so unserious. Like, they've been spilling her tea left and right and she would just giggle. <laughs> she's like, ha 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 ha, yeah, ha ha ha, yeah, I slept with Diamond, ha ha ha, ha. yeah, ha, ha, I kissed him, ha ha ha, yeah, he squeezed my ass, ha 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 ha. She's like, tickle me Elmo with <laughs> Yash. <laughs> And Swanky tells Bonang that, oh, you know, I spoke to um, Luis from Namibia. He says he knows you. And she's like, I don't know no Luis from Namibia. And she's like, I have very distinct experiences from Namibia. Like, I don't remember this guy at all. He's lying. Swanky tells this woman, okay, that... Yeah, he said, you know, something along the lines of he flew you from South Africa to Namibia. When you got to the hotel, you got to the reception. There were no flowers. You threw a fit and you left. I said, eh? What's he? That's not what, that's not what Luis said in book her room one time. He never said nothing about flowers. I was like, Swanky, were, were you listening? Swanky was not listening to that man. <laughs> Bonang is like, what? That is a complete lie. So she starts Googling him. She's like, I don't know this man. He follows me, but I don't follow him. Never heard of him, never seen him, never went to Namibia to go to any of his events. What is he talking about? When I meet him, it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna address it. Like, you're not about to sit here and lie on my good name. Bonang, girl, turns out, he ain't lie. We're going to get into that in the next video when we do the next episodes. Let me know your thoughts on the first three episodes of Young, Famous, and African season two. Girl, girl, girl. Let me know who are your favorite characters? Who are your least favorite characters? How are you feeling about the show on a scale of one to ten? You like it? You love it? You in between? I'm obsessed. Cause, because you know what? It's given Nollywood. Like it's given Nollywood. I remember watching Nollywood early as eight years old with my mama. I couldn't watch the most of Voodoo. But this here is given. So just let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and stay tuned for the next few episodes. Like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you at the next one. Deuces!